today we will be talking about render layers and why are there render layers. Okay. So basically render layers are there to help you split your scene into um, smaller, multiple, more manageable groups so that you can you can tweak certain settings to, to that render layer specifically um, of that group of uh, element cells in, inside it. Right. That way um, you, you have multiple passes, render passes for your compositor, which will allow them to have more controls during the um, compositing stage as well. Okay, so how do we create render layers in Maya? You need to click on this icon here. Okay, that will launch the, the render setup um, option. Okay, okay so let's talk uh, about what's here. Okay, render settings, these are all the, the render settings that you'll tweak that will affect the overall scene, like everything. So whatever you tweak here in the settings will affect all your render layers. Okay, so all these sample settings, um, it, it's applied in a whole. Okay, AOVs are the AOVs that you created if you have, and then likes are all the likes in your scene. Okay, so, um, so those are some of the, I mean, those are, these are the interface that you need to know. Okay. Let me just turn off this first. Okay. So you click on this plus here, it will create a render layer. Okay. So once you click, you'll see that it creates a render layer. Then you first, you need to name the layer that you want to call it. For example, if I were working on this, this scene, um, and I want to split my character and my environment into two separate layers, so I can call one, um, of my passes environment. Okay. So we'll say, uh, let's just do all caps. So environment. Okay. And then, um, I can create another one called the character, which we call it Bob here. So Bob and environment. So two render passes. Okay. So once you create the render layer, you can see that, um, you have more options here. So this eye here basically means that you are viewing from this layer. So if I click here, uh, it means that I'm viewing from this layer. Okay. And then what this does is, um, this icon here means that will it be rendered during the batch render when you guys are doing batch render. So for example, you, are, you have already splitted your environment and your character. You will not need to render your, your basically your beauty, which has both of them combined. You can turn this off or for some reason you only want to render environment. You can turn this off. So it will only render environment. Okay, so when I view from my environment layer, now you can see that my scene is empty because inside this layer, it's we haven't set up anything. So it means that it's there's nothing inside except our likes. So because the likes are included by default, you can turn off this option um, here. So by default, the, the likes are included um, by default. If you don't need it, um, you can turn it off and you input them yourself in all the render layers later on. Okay, so one thing to note in render layers, how it works um, is it works by collection. Okay, um, so how to create a collection? You will right click on the render layer, create collections. Okay, so you create a collections. For example, this uh, I'm rendering environment. So I'll create, uh, I'll name it probably the environment geometry. So environment geo. Okay, so we need to tell Maya this collection, environment geo, what it consists of. So what we need to do next is we need to go into our outliner. Okay. So, um, and then we need to find our environment, which already, um, it's already preset into set previously. I mean, um, the animators did a good job of naming their stuff so we can find it properly. So what we can do is we can middle mouse click the group into the collection like that, or you can select the, the group and click add here. Okay. And the last option is you can use the expression to, to call this, uh, to get this. So I want to use um, this set group, right? What I can do is I can create pipe, then set. Um, and then I want everything within the group so I can uh, pipe star. Okay. So that way, if I view here, you see it's also grabbing both of it. Okay. For some instance, you, you can't remember the syntax of this. What you can do is you can drag this into the expression area. It will put in the same thing. Okay, so this will grab just the group 
So if I view from here, oh, it's it's grabbing just a group and nothing inside. So we want the 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 components, the, the geometries within the group. So we can drag this here, and then we can remove this environment BG and add the star. So star basically means everything within this group. Okay, you can see once we press enter, we get everything inside. Okay, so um normally if your scene is not too complicated. Um, you can just um, put it in like that. Okay, but what is the, the benefit of using expression? For for some reason, maybe say, um, uh, okay, let me just do it. Okay, so maybe you already added this two into your collection like that, right? And then some somewhere down the road, you know, um, you, you guys decided to extend probably your, your background so you, you put in more right and this render layer will not automatically take that into account because you already hard coded it to be just these two group right so you can see that the, the, the probably the third BG will not be included in this render layer okay so let me just um, okay you will not be included in this render layer so what um, is nice is if you are using an expression um, here and you are setting it to start everything so you always grab whatever that is new inside this group so maybe sometime down the road um, your animators decided to add a few more you know, and like that it will automatically be um, included within the, the, the collection because of the expression that is calling everything within this group okay um, so let me just de delete all this. So that's the, the beauty of expression. So if you know how to use it, it, it can be very powerful. Okay, so that's so we have already input the set. And if we want, we can do a test render now. And it should only have the set in it. Okay, so you must be thinking, no, um, if that's so easy, why do we need different collection within the same layer like that? Okay, so if we look at it like that, we can tell that the character shadow is not there. So basically, the character's influence onto this set, it's not happening in this layer. So um, we, we can't do that because we, we need the shadows. So what we can do is we can create an additional collection. So this will be my character, so box um, geometry. Okay, I will put in um, box into it. Okay, so but if you put it into the collection like that, if I render, basically it looks. Okay, I'll need to update my scene. Okay, and then render. So basically, it means, okay, both pop and set is within this layer. But what we what we want is we want to render the set with the shadows, but without the character, right? That's the the goal that we want to achieve um for this render layer. Okay, so how we can do that is we can just select um any part of your your character just go into the shape um group and then go into arnold tab which is is this the shape no this is the surface yeah um the shape group inside arnold and then um here um there's two ways you can do it if you need to hold out um your character i, I can talk about this later on when we set up the character pass but for now we can turn off the visibility of the character in these passes. Okay, so first thing you need to make sure you select the correct collection. Okay, right click on the attributes that you want to override. Primary visibility, create absolute override for visible layer. So visible layer means the layer that is selected. Okay, if I never select anything, I can't, uh, oh, it, it will be created to something else. Yeah, I think it will just populate on its own without, um, taking any collection into account. So you need to select the layer, right click, create absolute override. Okay, so once you do that, you'll see that this attribute turns orange and you can see that under this collection, it creates uh, something else and you have this primary visibility option here. So what you can do now is you can turn off the primary visibility within this collection. Okay, and then if I were to do a render now, Okay, where's my render? You can see that the character is gone, the shadows is still there, and that way 
we can pass this to um compositor they can a over b our character layers uh, renders on top and it will still work right okay so that's how the the environment um render layer is set up so now we want to talk about um the character itself so again same thing we need to create collections so this will be my bob's geometry so i'll just add in the rig okay i will create another collection so this will be the reverse so this will be my set geometry which is everything else okay so you must be thinking okay if i do the same thing in the set geometry if i view from here okay i select the set geometry i go to the shape right click primary visibility here i turn it off okay and i render okay i should get the character correct but um i can't overlay this on top of my um, environment renders okay let me just save this image then i render environment okay so technically this pillar here in my set should cut off here but if i render my character like that and i layer this on top of my um, background render layer i will get the hands here right so this is where we can't use um, primary visibility okay okay so if we need the the object to be held up by another collection what we need to use is um, matte here so um, select the collection right click on matte create absolute override okay under matte we want to matte out we want to use the set geometry to matte out uh, our character geometry and then now if we were to render again you can see the the set is holding out the character properly so that way if i overlay this um, on top of my environment it will still work okay so that is the 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 overall um, understanding of how to set up render layers of course there's a lot of advanced things that you can um, do with this render layers for example um, render settings i know for sure no uh, my environments i i do not need so much uh, samples in this render layer i can make it faster so i can right click okay make sure i view from that layer okay right click a samples create absolute override and then within the layer itself i can override the samples for example this one i just set it to two so i can have this layer render faster and using less samples than the others so this, that way you can optimize your scene to, to get faster renders uh, if you need it yeah i think um we can go through more of the advanced stuff of like creating different render qualities um within your render layers and um in the next session some of the i mean sometime later uh one last thing that i want to go through is um okay so say you are you're setting up a Render layers for for a group project. Okay, everyone is working in different Maya file, and you want to share this setup that you already done to to your teammates, so that everyone has the similar uh, setup. So what you can do is you can right click, okay, export selected. Okay, so if I was select both of them, export selected. Okay. And then you can see that it, it exports into your Maya folder and there is this RST render setup template. Okay. Of course, when you set a project, you, you can create another folder and, and store all these JSON file. Okay. I can set this as my um, uh, short film um, render layers, for example. Okay. So if I save it, so it's a JSON file. Okay. And then okay so for example um someone some other artist so i have this um clean uh my file that's open there's no uh, render layer setup what i can do now is i can go into here import user template you can you will see the the files that you save so ah uh, what is the pop-up so short film render layers if i click that second option you can see that it automatically bring in the render layers that i already set up and the artist can continue from there. Yeah, I think that's it. I want to, I mean, that's all I want to talk about um, for render layers. 
Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, wait, one last thing before I, I end this. Um, okay, so you guys, I mean, if you are lighting um, artist, you probably want to do spheres, right? You want to render chrome and gray spheres. So you'll create a render layer called your, your spheres, maybe. Okay. Okay. So inside this um, outliner, I already prepared the spheres. Um, so if I were to view the spheres in the scene, it should be placed. Uh, come on, where is it? Okay, it's not showing up because I'm viewing from the environment um, layer. So if I view from my main beauty, I can see, you can see that. Okay, so normally the spheres, we will put it close to the character so it's representative of the lighting that we are getting, right? Okay, so how we can make sure these spheres are rendering correctly. Okay, so we need to create a collection. Okay, so the main geometry that we want is the sphere geometry, right? So sphere drill. I add in both of my sphere. Okay, then I need the collection because I want the chrome sphere to be reflecting all my environment, right? But I do not need my character. So I'll create a collection. I will add in the set. Okay, and I if I view from here, I should get my spheres and my set. And then if I were to render now, it should look like um, the, the set and the, the spheres should be there, like that. Okay, so that way we can tell uh, like what is reflecting onto our renders, uh, onto our character, right? And then what we can do next is you can turn off the visibility of the environment. So I can just go into the tab, okay, make sure you select the collection, primary visibility, turn it off. Okay, so if we render again, we should get just the sphere. So now, looking at the spheres, I can know that, oh, no, my character will get this nice back rim from this light. And then probably there's this bounce light that we are getting here onto the character face. And then from there, it's representative that, oh no, if my character is having a lot of the gray bounce, it's coming from the ground because the ground is, is this gray color. So this will give us a lot of information on our beauty renders. Like that. Cool. Yep, I think that's it for today. Um, this session. Hopefully it's useful for all you guys. Um, thank you.